welcome my dear learners from today we are beginning a new course titled machine design machine design is an applied course for mechanical engineers wherein which will apply the basics that we have learned from mechanics of materials or strength of materials theories of machines in designing the mechanical members come let us begin the new subject that is machine design from today's lecture machine today's lecture let us understand what is the meaning of machine design what are the steps involved in design of machine elements what is that i am going to offer in this course on machine design and what are all the modules what are the contents in it and also i'll recapitulate the properties of engineering materials and speak a few word about codes and standards in today's lecture coming for this course machine design machine design is defined as application of scientific principles technical information and imagination in description of machines or mechanical systems to perform the specified operations or functions with high efficiency and economy if i write down the definition of machine design machine design is defined as machine design is defined as application of application of first one is scientific principles scientific principles second one is technical informations third one is imagination why we are applying these things we are applying these things to describe in description of machine or mechanical systems machine or mechanical systems to perform specific operations or specific functions with high economy and efficiency high economy and efficiency so machine design is defined as application of scientific principles technical information and imagination in description of machine or mechanical systems to perform specific functions with high economy and efficiency as the definition itself indicates we are applying the scientific principles which we have already learnt example newton's laws of motion bernoulli's principle d lambert's principle etc will apply them in determining the forces acting on various machine members and we'll get the technical information that is if i want to choose an bell drive if i want to design a bell drive i should know the technical information of it with what material it is made of what is its tensile strength what is its ultimate strength those things should be known coming for imagination what will be the layout or what will be the dimensions of a bell drive system that i want i want to fabricate for specified applications so i am doing these things in order to describe a machine or mechanical system which is intended to perform a specific operation with high economy and efficiency now in this machine design course we are intended only to design of machine elements coming for steps involved in design of machine elements coming for steps involved in design of machine elements steps in design of machine elements first of all what is the meaning of machine element each part of a machine which has motion relative to another part is termed as machine element like if i consider an screw jack screw jack has cup tommy bar body etc each of these 
have motion with, re with respect to another and these are called as machine elements. So in designing these things, what are the steps involved is what I am going to discuss now. Coming for steps in design of machine elements, first thing is that we should specify the function of element. Specify the function of element. Specify the function of element. Whether we are designing the element for power transmission or we are designing the element for lifting a load etc. Like if I am designing the element for lifting a load like screw jack, if I am designing an element for power transmission such as bell drive or gear drive etc. that I should specify in the first step. Specify the function of element. Second thing is to determine forces acting on the element that is determine the forces determine the forces acting on the element this is very very important i should determine what are the various forces acting on the element this is because of the reason the various forces acting on the element are required to determine what is the stress induced in the element. Coming for various forces, it might be the force due to self-weight, dead load or externally applied forces and what type of forces are acting on it, whether it is gradually applied load, suddenly applied load or it is subjected for fatigue loading etc. Example, if I want to design axle, axle of an automobile are subjected for fatigue loading. Coming for designing of an screw jack, it is subjected for constant or gradually applied load. That is, it is used to lift an automobile upwards in order to change the stiffness, etc. So, therefore, we should determine the forces acting on the element. These forces can be determined by drawing free body diagram. If I draw the free body diagram, I can get the magnitude as well as direction of various forces acting on the machine element. That is what we should do in our second step. In the third step, we should determine the suitable material for it. Identify, identify the material, identify the material of the element. Identification of material of the element is very very important because when I when I am designing the machine element for fatigue loading case, then the material should possess high fatigue strength. Example, chromium nickel steel has high fatigue strength. So therefore, for fatigue loading applications, I should go for chromium nickel steel. Similarly, for flywheels, gears, etc. We will go for casting with cast iron because intricate shapes or difficult shapes can be easily modeled with less machining operation with the help of casting. So therefore, depending on the forces, what is acting on the machine element, we should decide what material that the element should be made of. Next, the third step is to determine mode of failure. Determine, determine the mode of failure. This failure modes might be because of yielding or because of fracture. We should determine in what mode the failure is occurring. In case of ductile material, failure occurs in cup and cone arrangement. Whereas in case of fatigue loading, it might be subjected for fracture. So therefore, we should identify what mode of failure is the machine element is subjected for. Likely mode of failure. I am not telling what mode of failure the machine element is going to occur. I am telling about the likely mode of failure that the machine member can be subjected to should be identified here based on which i'll determine the dimensions of the element determine the dimensions next step is to determine the dimensions determine the dimensions of the element like if I am designing a 
key then i am interested to determine what is the width height and length of the key for connecting between the shaft and hub if i am designing a shaft i am interested to know what is the diameter of the shaft that is required to transmit the given power and torque so likewise determine the dimensions of the element next step is to modify modify the dimensions modify the dimensions according to manufacturing need according to manufacturing according to manufacturing and check for critical sections and check the design at critical sections what does this mean once i determine the dimensions of a machine element i should modify these dimensions this means that if i provide shoulders i should replace it by fillets because shoulders create accumulation of maximum stress termed as stress concentration in order to avoid stress concentration i should provide shoulders if i have a larger hole i want to provide multiple holes in order to uniformly distribute the flow lines such a way that the accumulation of maximum stress won't takes place around the hole which acts as a stress riser so therefore we should modify the dimensions according to the manufacturing requirement and also we should analyze is the modifications cause any changes lead to the failure of the specimen or not or failure of the machine element or not therefore we should recheck the design for critical sections once all these steps have been done finally we will prepare the working drawing of the element so finally we will come up with prepare working drawing prepare working drawing of the element so in the final step we are going to prepare the working drawing of the element this working drawing of the element contains the tolerance fits dimensions what are the various forces specifications everything so this is the final step of design of machine element so in this course we will be addressing various machine members and we are going to design various machine members like we are going to determine the dimensions we are going to analyze the various forces acting on them since this course is very vast i am dividing this machine design course into two parts design of machine elements 1 and design of machine elements 2 i am going to address in the final part of today's lecture what i am going to take up in design of machine elements 1 and what i am going to address in the second part that is design of machine elements 2 before moving for the syllabus of this course i am interested to address the various properties of engineering materials we have learned what is the meaning of machine design what are the steps involved in design of machine element and next is materials material is very very important so selection of material is based on the mechanical properties of engineering material the important mechanical properties that one should know in design of machine element is first one so next we are discussing about properties of engineering materials properties of engineering materials first one is elasticity 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 is defined as the property by virtue of a material by which the material will get deformed under the application of load and regains its original shape and size when load is removed i repeat elasticity is a property of engineering materials by virtue of which it will deform under the application of load and regains its original shape and size once the load is removed this is known as elasticity second property is plasticity plasticity is opposite to elasticity in which the material will deform under the application of load and retains the deformation permanently even though we remove the load later 
so therefore plasticity is the opposite to elasticity next mechanical property one should know is ductility ductility is defined as the ability of a material which can be drawn into thin wires that is ability of a material to deform in the longitudinal direction under the application of tensile force that is drawn into thin wires whereas the opposite to ductility is brittleness brittleness is opposite to ductility wherein which material cannot be drawn into thin wires or it will not deform longitudinally under the application of tensile force is termed as brittleness next we have malleability malleability is the property of an engineering material to drawn into thin sheets in which the material can deform in all the directions whereas in case of ductility material will deform only in the longitudinal direction under the application of tensile force whereas in case of malleability material will deform in all directions where in which it can be drawn into thin sheets next engineering property of material is toughness 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 of a material is defined as the ability of a material to absorb energy until fracture the ability of a material to absorb energy until it gets fractured or break down so the amount of energy absorbed by an engineering material until it is get fractured that is termed as toughness next engineering property is hardness 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 is defined as the ability of an material to withstand surface abrasions or surface indentations the ability of a material to resist surface abrasions or surface indentations is termed as hardness next property of engineering material is stiffness stiffness is defined as the amount of force required to produce unit deformation in engineering materials it is measured with the help of modulus of elasticity so stiffness is generally defined as force required to produce unit deformation force required to produce unit deformation is termed as stiffness in engineering materials it is measured with the help of modulus of elasticity whereas stiffness is a very very important property for springs next we have strength strength of an engineering material is defined as the ability of the material to withstand load without yielding or breaking the ability of a material to withstand load without yielding or breaking next property is resilience 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 is somewhat similar to toughness it is also defined as the ability of a material to absorb energy within the elastic limit without yielding or breaking is termed as resilience resilience is measured as amount of energy absorbed per unit volume within the elastic limit so resilience is ability of a material to absorb energy within the elastic limit this is within the elastic limit whereas toughness is ability of a material to absorb energy until fracture until fracture so this is the difference between resilience and toughness resilience and toughness are the ability of material to absorb energy when it is loaded or when it is subject for impact or shock this is measured until elastic limit whereas this is measured until fracture or failure next important property is creep creep is defined as when a material is subjected for high temperature constant stress for a longer duration the material undergo permanent deformation which is termed as creep i repeat when an engineering material 
is subjected for constant stress at high temperature for longer duration of time it will undergo a permanent deformation which is termed as creep example for creep effects are turbine blades steam turbine blades which are subjected for constant stress at high temperature for longer duration of time which will undergo a permanent deformation which is termed as creep and piston ic engine piston ic engine connecting rod these are an example for materials or mechanical machine members which are subjected for creep effects so these are some very very important mechanical properties of engineering materials which one should know and if you are well aware of these mechanical properties you can choose the proper engineering material for the specified application and we can design the machine element in order to perform the specified function with high efficiency and high economy now moving ahead let me discuss about codes and standards codes codes are defined as set of specifications for design analysis and fabrication or manufacturing intended to have high degree of safety efficiency and quality so codes are defined as codes are defined as set of specifications for set of specifications for design analysis and manufacturing intended to have higher degree of safety why we have these specifications the purpose is to have the purpose is to have high degree of safety high degree of safety efficiency and quality in order to have high degree of safety efficiency and quality we are setting some specifications for design analysis and manufacturing this is termed as codes whereas standards is defined as coming for standards standards is defined as set of specifications set of specifications for mechanical parts materials or processes materials or processes why we have this set of standards we have this set of standards intended to achieve intended to achieve high level of uniformity very very important high level of uniformity high level of uniformity standards are very very important to achieve uniformity whereas codes are important to achieve safety and then to achieve high level of uniformity efficiency and quality so this is about codes and standards coming for specification of or designation of materials in engineering coming for designation coming for designation and properties of materials using codes and standards we can directly refer our data handbook for this complete course on machine design i will be using machine design data handbook design data handbook written by k mahadevan and k balavir reddy fourth edition i will be using this 
design data handbook for this complete course on machine design both for design of machine elements 1 as well as for design of machine elements 2 in this design data handbook if you refer refer design data handbook the short end of ddhp stands for design data handbook i am using design data handbook written by k mahadevan and k balaviri reddy fourth edition for this complete course so in this book if you refer appendix 1 appendix 1 that is page number 454 to 457 you have the designation and properties of materials example if i give fe 350 this means that it is a grey cast iron it is a grey cast iron with ultimate strength of 350 MPa with ultimate strength of 350 MPa this is what this code stands for FE 350 like this for various codings you can refer design data handbook appendix 1 page number 454 to 457 so this is about the introduction to this new course called machine design as i said i will be dividing this entire machine design course into two parts that is design of machine elements 1 and design of machine elements 2 in design of machine elements 1 i will be dividing it into five modules and in design of machine elements 2 also i am taking up five modules in design of machine elements 1 in part 1 design of in design of machine elements part 1 in first module i will be addressing theories of failure theories of failure and design for static strength and design for or I'll take up stress concentration I'll take up stress concentration this is what I'll take immediately from next lecture next in module 2 I'll be taking design for impact strength and design for fatigue strength design for impact strength and design for fatigue strength in module 3 in module 3 i'll take up design of shafts shafts key and couplings design of shafts key and couplings in module 4 we'll take up design of permanent joints design of permanent joints means welding and riveting Welded joints and riveted joints will be addressed in module 4 and in the final module 5 I will take up power screws. I will take up power screw. This is what I will do in design of machine elements 1 and coming for design of machine elements 2 in the part 2 of this course.
in the part 2 of this course in module 1 i will address design of curved beams design of curved beams and cylinders design of curved beams and cylinders in module 2 i will take up design of springs in module 3 i will take up design of gears like spur gear helical gear worm gear and bevel gear and in module 4 i will take up design of brakes and clutches design of brakes and clutches and in module 5 I will take up design of bearings. So this is the roadmap for the complete course on machine design where in which in part 1 we will be discussing on these 5 topics and in part 2 we will be discussing on these 5 topics. Totally this complete course on machine design has 10 modules. With this very brief introduction to this new course machine design, I am concluding this introductory lecture. That's all from this lecture. Thank you all.